So with Thumbtack, you get what they call leads. Yo, what's up, YouTube? It's your man, back at it again. It's DJ Barry B. So um, let's talk about some things. I did a couple things um, the past few months that I really haven't had time to post, but I'm going to get to it. Um, I did a review of my microphone. I did a couple things. But what I want to talk about now is budget money because I made myself an LLC last year. Yeah, I don't have any employees. It's just me. I list my wife because she's part owner, of course. You know, my wife is part owner. But um, so what happened was, so now I'm going to figure out my taxes. Now, I don't know if most of you know, I get, I would say 90, 95% of my gigs off of Thumbtack. So you don't notice how much it costs to get gigs off of Thumbtack. So let's say, for instance, I'm just going to throw a number out. I made $5,000 last year in revenue. Thumbtack advertisement cost me, and I didn't realize this until I went through all my bank statements because you don't really realize it, which is crazy. I need to start keeping up with this. So this is going to be a good business hint. So it cost me about four thousand maybe a little over four thousand dollars at the adding up all the fees so some gigs you get twenty dollars in change they charge you some they charge you sixty dollars in change i don't know how they figure out how much they charge you because most of the people are saying they don't want to pay you between 350 500 something like that which is crazy so they should come out with some flat fee a gig is a gig and here's another one somebody who posts on thumbtack they want a dj you answer it they contact like three, four DJs. You answer it, they charge you, right? So they charge you $30. This person cancels the party or goes with somebody else, that's $30 out your pocket. You never see him back. I know advertisement is a risk. Even if you go on Wedding Wire or whatever, you can advertise, you can pay for the paid service. It doesn't mean that you're going to get any clients, but it's going to cost you a flat rate. But the thing is, you know how much it's going to cost you going forward. So with Thumbtack, you get what they call leads. You have two type of leads. You have a direct lead, and then you have leads called opportunities. Now with the direct lead, it's somebody that they figured they want to hire you. So they actually went through, they saw your profile, and they contacted you. Opportunities are just the ones that are, um, Thumbtack throws out there that's in your area that may have not got a hit from the DJ that they contacted, or maybe they contacted four DJs and only one gun got back with them. So, you know, you have a chance to get that job if you want to. Now with the direct leads, they say it costs you 20% less than opportunity leads. But 20% less of what? Because they say that they base their fees based on how much you can earn. But it's not always. It should base their fees based on how much the person is offering to pay. So you know that person telling you, they show you, you open up the job. The person say, okay, I'm having a party and it's going to be at this location. And my budget is between $350 and $500. That's a big gap. So you go in there, I go in there, and I offer, I go in the middle. So I said $400. So that's what the fee, the, the lead, the fee should be based on. So if you're going, I don't know how much they charge, how many percent, but it, but it's crazy. You, you can't figure it out. It's hard to balance your budget if you don't know how much you're being charged. Even though you could set a budget inside of your, um, inside of your profile that says, I don't want to spend more than this. Yeah, you, you try sticking to that little $200 budget a month. You blow through that budget like crazy, but people getting leads and stuff. So my thing is I'm hoping that I can go ahead and get some more word of mouth. I got a few gigs this year, um, I should say in 2019 and this year in 2020 based off a gig that I did before. And those are the best. But um, remember, sometimes you have to advertise also because you don't make enough money to just be 
relying on word of mouth. So you got to advertise. Now, I've been listening to some of the guys online saying, okay, you should do the Instagram and the, uh, Facebook and so on and so forth. Okay, cool. But I got another life and I can't dedicate all my time to doing this. So there's got to be some fine line, there's some fine balance to what I need to do. So I'm just going to give you guys a tip. Watch every time you get a lead, if you're using Thumbtack, see how much they take out the bank and see how much it compares to another lead. Sometimes you got a lead or you get the job, they pay you $400, they take out $30. You get a job, another job, four hundred dollars. They take out fifty dollars. How do they decide how much is coming out, and how the hell could I balance my um, budget by random numbers like that? So if I get a four hundred dollar job, I can I know if I say okay, every time I get a four hundred dollar job, it's going to cost me forty dollars. So I know it's a whatever percent of the budget is going to advertisement. But if you're telling me I don't know how to budget it in advance until after, which is a pain in the neck. So I'm thinking about getting away from this thumbtack and just going to wedding wire. The only downfall about that is that I'm going to be new on wedding wire. I tried Gigmaster. I didn't get anybody because I don't have reviews. Or anything. I even posted pictures and videos and everything. But um, there was two problems. I, don't, I live in New Jersey, north of New Jersey, but I hate going to New York to do parties. So I usually refuse the ones in New York because the traffic, the tolls. By the time you finish paying $15, $20 in tolls and the traffic, it's not even worth it. So, And um, I saw this other one, Fash, F-A-S-H dot com. Um, I tried them. I don't know if that's a gimmick or what, but it, it, the people I contacted, nobody ever got back with me. At least Gigmaster. I got one person got back to me, and it was a um, bar mitzvah, which... This guy wanted a lot, and I never really did a bar mitzvah before. They were making that bar mitzvah seem like it was more in-depth than a wedding, and that was crazy, man. They wanted people, they wanted you to bring dances, motivational dances, and they wanted separate DJs. I, I can't go there. I, I, I can't. That's a job above my head, and what you need to learn to do sometimes is turn on jobs because you do better turning down the job than taking that job and making your company look bad. So just keep that in thought so until next time i think i'm going to post this video and um then i'm going to get down i mean i'm going to post this video then i'm going to sit down and i'm going to make a couple of gig logs because i got about four or five parties i did already and i didn't do any gig logs i got all the video footage but the gig logs are uh, they're gonna be challenging because of the copyrights and because you got to get the you want the best clip uh, you know, you want your company to look good. You want the right angle. You want the right people. Yeah. So until next time, you guys be good, be safe, and remember, wash your hands. Try your best to keep your hand out your face, which I know is very hard. I love to touch my face. And um, just be safe. Peace.